Hello, and welcome to another episode of Undiscovered Beasts and Strange Phenomena. Please join our experienced and knowledgeable panel of hosts as we explore the great mysteries of our time. Bigfoot, UFOs, ghosts, and unexplained phenomena. Hello, everyone. This is Vanessa Hogel again, your host for all things paranormal and supernatural. I thought we would discuss something that's a little bit near and dear to my heart this time. Channeling. The elephant in the room of the paranormal, so to speak. And it is by far one of my favorite topics. It is something that I hold very near and dear to me. Is it something that I do very regularly? So I, it isn't a not that I'm an expert because nobody is when it comes to this stuff, but I am well versed and I have a tremendous amount of experience in it, and I want to share that with you guys. When it comes to channeling, it it is very difficult to understand at the onset, but once you get a hang of it and once you feel comfortable with what you're doing and how you're doing it, you learn to gain some semblance of control over it. But it is very frightening in the beginning, and that is what I want to discuss with you guys. Best way I can do that is to go ahead and give you a a tidbit of my experience with it. And that is the first real time I ever channeled that, that I'm aware of. Now, could this have happened in the past and on a much smaller scale? Sure. But it isn't something that I remember, but this is this is crazy, y'all. So I'm just going to have you walk down this, this story road with me. Uh, it was maybe 10 or 12 years ago. I was in New Orleans, first trip there. And uh, I remember we were at a, a restaurant in the business district, me and three other girls that I was with. And we were going to be heading back to Oklahoma, you know, from New Orleans uh, that day, later on that night, actually. And the one place I wanted to go so bad that I hadn't been able to go to yet was Marie Laveau's tomb. Now, if y'all know anything about voodoo, you know Marie Laveau is my girl, okay? And I wanted to see her tomb so bad, and we we just hadn't been able to make it to there yet. And it didn't look like it was going to happen anytime soon. So that was going to be the one thing that I was going to have to to put on the bucket list for a next trip. Well, we're standing outside this restaurant in, in the business district, and... That's the last thing I remember until I wake up outside Marie Laveau's tomb, standing a few feet away from it. Now, what you need to know (laughs) is Marie Laveau's tomb from this restaurant is about 18 blocks. It's about 18 blocks. And according to the three ladies that I was with, they said that we were standing there talking about it, trying to figure out if there was any way to make it happen. And they said, my chin just dropped to my chest, and then all of a sudden my head popped up. I turned around, and I took off. And they said, I ran in and out of traffic, up and down alleyways, almost getting hit by cars and buses for 18 blocks. And they caught up with me outside St. Louis Number 1 Cemetery. I believe that's the one she's in. And uh, they said I was on the grass median right outside the cemetery gate. And they said when they came up behind me, I held my hand up and said, just a minute, and then walked directly into the cemetery where her tomb is, all the way into, I believe it's the middle of the cemetery towards the back. Now, what's important to know about that is some people will look at that and say that's channeling. Some people will look at that and say that that I was possessed by Marie Laveau. The fact of the matter is, to me, it's irrelevant Um, what happened and what is relevant to me is that at some point in time, something, whether it was Marie Laveau or or somebody else, decided that they were going to use my body without my consent, if I'm being fair, and take me to where I wanted to be because they did not foresee the chance of me being able to do that on my own. I consider that a gift. I do. I consider that a huge gift, and I'm very grateful for it, but I'm also very, very, very aware that it was done without my consent, 
uh, without my knowledge, I actually don't have any memory of the 18 block traveling that I did. I have no recollection of that. Everything that I know of the tale is what I was told from outside witnesses as they tried to chase me down. This is important for many reasons. And this is part of the do's and don'ts, um, or the pros and cons even, of channeling. Although I did not know these at that time because this was a first for me. Well, with that, knowing, I, I see now when I'm looking back and knowing how I felt while I was in New Orleans, the, the two days prior to this event, and knowing how open I had allowed myself to be, I see where I made it easy for something or someone to kind of hop inside, use me as a taxi, and, and, and take me there. I, I get it. What I needed to make myself realize is the dangers in that. When you are in the paranormal field or, or the metaphysical field, supernatural, whatever you want to call it, things that go bump in the night, anytime you allow yourself to stay open, even if you've never channeled before, you run the risk of allowing something to take up residence in you. There was just no way around it. And the fact that it happened on such a large scale for me, my very first time, that worries me for others. What if I had been by myself? What if that happened when I was at a location and there was nobody else around me? What if I did one of the taboos heaven forbid, of going and investigating somewhere by myself. And that happened, which, by the way, kiddos, don't ever do that, okay? Don't ever do that. There's no reason to go off investigating by yourself. It's just too dangerous for many reasons. But I think of these things now, and I think of what I should have done knowing how open I already was. The greedy Vanessa wants to, wants to absorb all of the information that there is out there. You know, I do. I generally leave myself wide open so that whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And that's been to my detriment a time or two. Now, I always encourage, don't do that. Don't be me. Don't do what I do. Not because I'm great at it, but because I worry about you. And that's where the do's and don'ts come in. When you are interested in channeling, it is imperative, imperative that you have somebody with you that you have somebody who has your back, that they understand the little nuances that make you you, that they can tell, believe it or not, a difference in your eyes, the tone of your voice, the posture in which you hold your body, the way that you walk. Every one of those little things can be altered in one way or another while you're channeling. Your language can change. Your accent can change. Believe it or not, your eye color can change. That has happened to me on multiple occasions. There are physical um, clues, for lack of a better way of putting it. There are physical clues to when something is trying to take up residence in you. And you need to have somebody there that can spot those clues and know, this is the most important part, know how to handle it. So this is something that when you're going into a location or you're going to a place that you feel might resonate with you spiritually or might have some type of hold on you as, as if you've been drawn to it for many years and you finally have the opportunity to, to go and, and you know that you're going to have that connection, that connectivity with whatever it is in that area, you need to make sure that you have someone there that knows who you are a person and can watch out for those little changes. You need to have a game plan. That's the kicker. I found this out more on, uh, again, more than one occasion. Um, Gwen Clapper is, is, you know, my buddy. She's my business partner with uh, Perfect Trust Productions. And bless her, that woman has had to pull her uh, traveling altar out more than a time or two in regards to me and my channeling. But we have a game plan. We know how to handle the situation. And over time, I've learned how to allow more of myself to stay in my body, for lack of a better way of putting it. 
um, in regards to channeling so that I am more aware of what's happening as it's going down and I don't have to be spoon-fed the facts after the fact. So those are the important things. You need to, if you're going to do this, you need to make sure that you have somebody who is with you that you trust, somebody who is with you, knows you, that knows the little things to look for that make you you. And you need to have a game plan for when things go south that they know how to deal with it. Um, I cannot, I cannot stress that enough. The other thing is you also need to trust the person that you're with to trust that they will allow the process to happen as long as you're not being harmed in any way. This is important for many reasons. One, um, and I've, again, been through this many, many, many times, but a lot of times during channeling, there there is information that's necessary to get out. There, Most spirits don't just hop inside you and drive around just for giggles. They don't do that. Generally, there is a very real purpose in what they're trying to do. In the Marie Laveau instance, I believe they were trying to get me to the one place I so desperately wanted to see and to feel the energy off of and to have that camaraderie with her for just a moment. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for that, regardless of how odd it was at the time. But in, in these channeling moments, with the information that they're trying to give you, it's imperative that whomever you're with recognizes that as well and allows you to go through the process as long as you're not in any danger. Y'all, this takes an immense amount of trust, an immense amount of trust. And this person, who whoever is with you, truly has to know who you are and, and know what you're willing to allow. That's the kicker. You've got to have a cutoff point. Um, safety word, <laughs> even though you can't, even though you won't know what the safety word is, they've got the safety word. They know what it is. So the safety word is banana, something along those lines. But you, these are all the little things that you need to think of. What I want you to do is stop looking at the Hollywood version of channeling and assuming that that is accurate because nothing could be further from the truth. Now, those who, um, who do this like myself, let me tell you some of the positives of it because, I mean, I'm, I'm real big on letting y'all know what the negatives are, but let's talk about the positives of it too. There are many, many positives to channeling. I was in Ireland, um, not too very long ago, we were filming a, a, a docu-series that is still coming out on YouTube, and we were going to a location right next to where we were staying. And I didn't really expect this to happen quite the way that it did. But when we were in this little, this little home that was, was kind of partially attached to the motel that we were staying in, quite haunted, but I didn't quite expect things to happen the way that they did. And, and I knew that there were children involved, but I didn't know that they were going to be so so attached to me. And within moments, within moments of, of being in this residence that used to be inhabited by the gentleman who owns the motel, um, I was taken over. And they... I know now I was able to keep a little bit of myself in there and I was able to remember what they were saying and I can still feel the feelings that they were feeling and what they kept telling me was how hungry they were and the bread was moldy and that they they couldn't eat. There was nothing to eat and the bread was moldy. And that is very interesting in the fact that we had a loaf of bread in our room and had had um, kind of shuffling the night before in our room of things that we could not see. And uh, we'd been eating out of this bread the entire time we were there, you know, PB and J's. We go back to the room after this channeling situation and Gwen is trying to, to get the attachments to release from me uh, because basically that's what they were turning into. They were out of me now, but on me. And uh, we reached down to pick up the bread to make ourselves some sandwiches that we had just eaten from that day. 
and the entire loaf of bread was covered in mold. Can't happen in the span of a few hours. So it's, they're trying to tell you things. They're trying to show you things. They're trying to communicate in a way that makes you understand where they were, where they're at, and what they're trying to accomplish. And these were children, and they were doing it in the best possible way that they could, you know, and using me to do that. To me, that's necessary. To me, that's necessary information. And am I willing to go through some of the things that I have to go through in order to get that information? You're darn tootin' I am. Absolutely. Um, but, But I have the experience, and I was not alone. I was not alone. Again, that is the biggest kicker. That is one of the things I want to stress even again, and I see it time and time again on social media, is people talking about wanting to go to these locations and then they're they're antagonizing or they're they're trying to get a response. They're trying to get these these spirits to give them some type of of interaction or proof that they're there and a lot of times y'all this is the way it's going to happen and you need to prepare yourself for it you know it's it's one of those things where you just can't let it go (laughs) you you can't just say i'm gonna go ahead and, and try to antagonize you and get you to give me all of this information or show me all of this this evidence or whatnot and expect this not to be the outcome. It will, and I can guarantee you at some point in time, be your outcome. So as far as the do's and don'ts go, do want to do it if your heart is in the right place. Do make sure that you have somebody with you that can take care of things and take care of you and document what you're saying and the things that you're claiming you're feeling and, you know, what your mannerisms are and are are you giving them information that nobody else could know and are you leading them in a different direction? I mean, these are all the do's. Do all that. Make sure you have your support system. You have what can pull you out of it regardless of what your personal faith is, okay? Do make sure that you're never alone. These are all things that are extremely, extremely important, okay? The don'ts are just as important. Don't do this alone. Don't antagonize. Please, y'all, don't antagonize. And I can give you an example of that one, too. (laughs) I really can. Now, I wasn't antagonizing. I wasn't antagonizing, okay? Um, But it's... I think it was my I think it was my attitude after having gone through something quite stressful at a particular location. I think it was my attitude that I had after it and the fact that I just said, you know, whatever happens happens. I'm done. I'm done. So whatever happens happens. And uh that actually ended up being to my detriment. You know, um in in my many moons of doing this of I can give y'all a hint as to what channeling has done for me physically. I have been tackled in a gravel driveway after I ran half a mile barefoot by a uh, ex-combat army vet. Had to take me to the ground because I wasn't stopping barefoot on gravel. Yeah, um, I have a hurdled headstone <laughs> in cemeteries going faster than my little chubby legs could ever take me, okay, um, simply because I allowed myself to be so open that they that they hopped on in. Um, I've actually had more than one person inside of me at once fighting each other to try to get information out. Um, my last flight coming back from Virginia I look like I had, you know, the holy heck beat out of me. I had feet the size of cantaloupes. I couldn't wear shoes. I was I had so many bruises. I was so beaten up. 
you know, um, it was it was rough. I looked like I aged 10 years in four days. It took weeks and weeks and weeks to overcome. Uh, in Ireland, I actually, um, after the little ones took me over and we were finally um, back in the room, I thought that I was okay, and we went to go do a live feed on Facebook, and I didn't realize that that they were still giving me information and they were pulling my left eye all the way in towards my nose while I'm talking on a live feed. You can see it happening. That's one of the physical things that we talk about. That's one of the things that you need to look for. That's completely not normal. (laughs) My eyes are fine, right? (laughs) You know, it's one of those things where you just, you you have to be careful. You have to be careful. And if I hadn't had Gwen there, who knows? Who knows what I would have went through? There is no way for me to know what I would have went through. You know, um, there there have been times when I've been coming out of a channeling instance where it is unbelievably excruciating. And the screams that come out of me, um, as they've been described by witnesses, are the screams of dozens of people. That, I have no explanation for that, folks, but I do have to tell you, this is something that if you ever decide to do this, this might very well be you. This might be you. The the bruised bodies, the the weird eyes, the screaming, you know, when when you're, when you have something that's trying desperately to communicate through you, or, Or let's go ahead and just go go deeper, okay? Or they're not trying to communicate through you. They're trying to become a part of you. That does happen, folks. That does happen. And that is very, very, very difficult to deal with. Um, That is an attachment to the nth degree, okay? (laughs) If I'm being honest. I'm not chuckling to make light of it. I'm chuckling because, honestly, if I didn't, I'd probably go stark raving mad. I truly would because all of these things, anything that I'm telling you here, I'm telling you because it actually happened to me. So I, I kind of have a, kind of have firsthand knowledge <laughs> of it, and I want you to have that knowledge so that you don't make the same mistakes I've made, okay? That is very, very, very important to me. Um when they decide that they like the fit, okay, of being in you and it gives them a freedom that, that they don't feel they have when when they're just out there in the cosmos and, and floating around, for lack of a better way of putting it, those are the hardest and the most painful to get rid of. And general, generally that's where the screaming comes from. That's where the screaming comes from. Um, That's happened to me multiple times. That happened, like I said, multiple times in Virginia um, at actually separate locations. Separate locations. Uh, Cabin on 360 was one. Private residence was another. Uh, Multiple times at the private residence, different areas of that location. Um, The other thing that can come from trying to expel something that has latched onto you from the inside is vomiting. Vomiting. That's, y'all, that's not fun and it's not cute, okay? <laughs> it's, it's not attractive, all right? So that's not something you want to to have happen too terribly much when you're on an investigation. Um, so remember that. The, these are the downfalls of it. The the wonderful things about channeling is the information that you get and being able to help them. The downfalls of it are when you have something that, that just likes your condo a little bit too much. And it makes, you know, the condo that is you makes it very difficult to get them out. Um, I Again, I am one of those gals <laughs> that it's just, I'm going to keep doing it. But please be careful if you do it. Please be careful if you do it. I don't want you to go through the same things I have because I don't know if the support system you have is going to be accurate enough 
or helpful enough to pull you out of it. I don't know. And and these things concern me. Um, the other thing that you need to look at is when you are in, if you're like me and you go overseas a lot, there the attack the 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 channeling process over there, and the the people that have passed on over there, it is it is different as well. I call it. I actually did a, a YouTube video on this one time. I call it paranormal Chinese food. The geography <laughs> is very different. The, the the demographics are different of the people in different areas of the world. And the way that they do things is very different. Sometimes all you have to do is be very polite and they'll step on out. And then there are other times where that is absolutely not the case. So if you are like me and you want to go into a location where you don't know anything about it because you want to make sure that everything you're getting is authentic to to the best possible degree. You don't want it to be tainted at all with preconceived information. That's how I do things. So if you do things like that, that's that's wonderful too. I'm not going to down you for that. But if you're a channeler or want to try channeling, make sure that whomever is with you goes in with some knowledge. They need to have some knowledge of the area, of the people, of the habits, the traditions, the religion, that is another thing you need to think of. I'm pagan. I am a card-carrying, tree-hugging, candle-burning pagan witch. That is what I do. That is me. I can and have had Catholic people come through me, Christian people come through me, (laughs) you name it. You name it, they popped on in the taxi that is known as Vanessa, okay? Haitian voodoo priestesses, I've had those, you know? So it's, you you need to have some knowledge, some knowledge, or not you, but the person with you, some knowledge of, of the area, the demographic, the religious preference, everything else, in order to be able to to aid you in forcing or or helping this spirit out of your body so that they can go about their business and you can go about yours. Um, You also need somebody to watch out for you legally. All right, hold on to your hats, kiddos, because I'm getting ready to give you a good one. Again, I was in New Orleans many, many moons ago. Totally separate trip, different people with me. And we went into a place called, I think it's called Reverend uh, Reverend Zombie's Duty Shop. I think is what it is. And I'd been in there plenty of times, plenty of times on previous trips. Because keep in mind, that's kind of my mecca. I went to New Orleans like 10 times in three years, okay? So I had been there plenty of times. And I walked in there perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Was in there less than five minutes, and then all of a sudden, I felt like I had this 200-pound man just sit on my shoulders. And I I. I was very disoriented. I didn't quite know what to do. So I remember stepping out of Reverend Zombies and putting my hand against the wall. And that is the last thing I remember. I woke up, I don't know how far away it is, on my back with my knees up, you know, kind of relaxed, I guess, on the sidewalk in front of uh, Jacques St. Germain's house there in the French Quarter. Now, um, Jacques Saint Germain was an interesting fellow. Uh, he is the legend has it he was one of New Orleans' first vampires, and that's very, very, very interesting. It could take an entirely other show to just to talk about that. But look him up, Jacques Saint Germain. Well, according to the girls I was with, they followed me as I started out of the store, and they had seen me do this before. They knew what was going down. They let me run with it. And they chased after me with my little super spidey speed, as they call it, and caught up with me outside this house. They said I went straight to it. And I was trying to break in. I was trying to physically and actively break in to this home in the French Quarter of New Orleans, checking every window that was within reach. 
every, I mean, the, the, the front door, everything, doing anything I could to try to open them up. Then they said I went around the side to a door that wasn't even visible to anybody else and tried to open that. And they tried to stop me. They tried to shake me. They tried to yell at me to get some reaction from me. And they said that I looked at them and had no idea who they were. And then when I figured out I couldn't get in, that I turned around, sat down, then laid down on the sidewalk, (laughs) took my knees up, and snapped to. That's when I woke up. And I remember laying on my back, looking up with all of these people (laughs) staring down at me. And I'm like, for real, did I do now? Really? Because I don't even know if I want to know. When I say have people that have your back, I mean it. Because any cop could have come up to me at that time and arrested me for attempting to break an enter. Okay? Because I was within moments away, from what I understand, from what they were telling me, of breaking windows to get into this home. And they actually were able to, for the most part, steer me away from that and just allow me to kind of work my process out. That's important, y'all. That's really important to know. I mean, it's not all spirits are going to have you do something that is flowers and sunshine, you know. I don't know who that was trying to get me into that house. I have no idea. And, I mean, honestly, at this point, does it matter? No, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, I was doing something that could have been construed as illegal, that could have got me into a great deal of trouble had I not had people with me that were looking out for me. In this same tone, I'm going to go ahead because I'm going to close up here in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the other thing that if you at all want to channel, if you at all want to do anything like this, I am, I'm going to lay down the law on you real quick. You absolutely cannot or should not use any substances, liquid or otherwise, alter your state while doing that. No drugs, no drinking. I cannot stress this enough. What you need to understand is when you're doing something like this, when you're allowing another being to inhabit your personal space, and you're relinquishing a great deal of control in doing that, the last thing you need to have happen is to have your anything about you altered. Your defenses are already down enough. You do not need them down even further. When you're coming out of channeling, the hunger alone will knock you sideways. True story, y'all, there's <laughs> there's a running joke with BPI, Beyond Perception Investigators, that I can down an entire bunch of bananas after I channel. True story. I absolutely can. I can down an entire bunch of bananas. Um, and my preference, personally, is queso, if I can ever pour that down my throat, but true. Um, you are absolutely famished. Because the energy in a in an unaltered state is the energy that you use is ex, it, that you lose actually is extreme because they're using you they're using your energy you're left with nothing and if you start out in a compromised state imagine the damage that could do. Now, I, I'm very strict about this for, for one main reason, other than the fact of the obvious, okay, but also the fact that, you know, I I have multiple head injuries. You know, I have scar tissue on my left frontal lobe. I have seizures due to that, petty mal seizures due to that. I also have low blood sugar. So I have to keep my stress levels down. I have to keep my blood sugar levels up, and I have to, to make sure that, I don't put myself in a state to to provoke a seizure, if at all possible. So in doing all this, I I have all of that in the back of my mind, 
as I'm allowing something else to inhabit my body and use my energy. So I would have, if something bad happened to me because I chose to go into it in an altered state, I have nobody to blame but myself. But whomever was with me would feel the repercussions for that. They would feel the guilt for that if something was to happen to me. And I personally care too much about my friends. So that is really something I want you guys to consider. Um, I know you're probably going to try it. I know you're going to want to do stuff like this, and I totally get it. Um, Just please, 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 please (laughs) do the things that I ask. Make sure that you have somebody or multiple people who can look out for you. Make sure that they are responsible. Make sure that you have a way to document or that they have a way to document the information that you give them when this is going on. It's going to take many tries, many, many tries to get it to where you're comfortable and you're allowing part of yourself to stay in there. It took me years, absolute years, to get to the point where I can remain in there to a certain degree with whatever is in there. So don't think you're going to go out and start doing this and that's going to happen overnight. If it does, more power to you. Good on you. But the odds are greatly stacked against you in that regard. So be smart. Be prepared. Have people with you that have your back. And make sure that you take care of yourself. If you do those things, you won't hear one nasty comment or negative comment from me about how you shouldn't be doing it. But if you don't, and I hear about it, I'm going to come down on you like a southern grandma. Okay? All righty, as long as we're square, y'all, that is going to be it for this week. And uh, look forward to talking to you again. Catch y'all later.